Thank you very much for keeping it Y254. A very good morning to you. My name is Ram Aguko. As always, it's a pleasure being with you. If at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. And today it's all about understanding creative and critical thinking. That's right. Today, what is creative thinking? What is critical thinking? And how do they, what role do they play? in our day-to-day -day lives. I'm joined by Dr. Ofunja Lawrence. He is a lecturer at Quare University. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. The last time to look up with you, it was a month ago. <laughs> About a month ago. Yeah, it has been, it, 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 it's been that long. <laughs> yes, time flies. Yeah, time flies. That yes. really does fly. Yeah. Uh, make sure that you engage with us. All right? The hashtag as always is why in the morning. Give us your thoughts in regards to this Why in the Morning at uh, Y254 channel on Twitter and at Ram Maguko. Give us your thoughts. What is creative thinking? And how, uh, I, I, are you a creative thinker? Do you consider yourself a creative thinker? When it comes to problem solving, analyzing, we are, today we are talking about creative thinking because, you know, in life generally, this thing applies in our day-to-day -day lives. Whether you're at school or at, or at work, you need to have creative and critical thinking so that you can be able to execute whatever you do perfectly. How is it that you, uh, what are your observational skills, analysis, uh, interpretation, reflection, evaluation? We're talking about inference skills, explanational skills, problem solving skills. We're talking about decision making skills. How best can you make yourself a critical thinker in a way that makes you look good at the decisions you make? Because at the end of the day, it's all about you and uh, you know how best you work yourself towards the future. Also, the, uh, the, give us your thoughts in regards to this. As you continue, we shall sample your feedback later on. Dr. Lawrence, Karibu Zana, as always. Thank you. Um, let's first start by dispensing of these um, words that we're talking about. The linguistics. Yes. Creative thinking, critical thinking. They may look, yeah, it, 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 uh, they may look shallow, but... They are different in uh, definition. Yes. So let's start with the creative thinking first. What is creative thinking? So thank you for this invitation. Uh, it's important that I give a background mm -hmm. before I move to this discussion of the day. Mm -hmm. So creative and critical thinking is a facet in philosophy, or it's a facet of philosophy, mm -hmm. whereby it's a product of certain uh, disciplines in philosophy such as logic and epistemology. So creative thinking and critical thinking, mm -hmm. from the mere understanding of the word creative, to be creative is to be innovative. Eh? Mm -hmm. or to come up with uh, novel ideas about something or newfangled aspects of something. For instance, you're faced with uh, a challenge. How do you wade through that challenge? Mm -hmm. You have to be creative. Eh? Yeah. And on the other hand, to be critical, it simply means to see through issues whereby you are able to zoom in and zoom out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have to put a caveat to this. Huh? Mm. Uh, zoom in and zoom out huh? as uh, expressions in logic or philosophy in this context huh? don't have to be understood from the perspective of camera, photography, and all that. Because that's the first huh? thing that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so by zooming in, uh -huh. it means you go deeper into an issue. You analyze it. Yes, you pursue the ultimate causes. What does uh, or what informs this particular issue? You go to the root causes of the issue. Mm -hmm. But when you zoom out, huh, mm -hmm. you move to the highest level that you can as far as that issue is concerned. Mm -hmm. You explore all the possible uh, chances chances or angles. You don't just look at something unilaterally, but you give it a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't take anything for granted because assumptions have got no room in philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is the issue that uh, 
um, normally affects people assumptions yes you assume something and at the end of the day back, it, it backfires on you you yes. end up regretting why did I think of it before yes you told you've talked about analysis yes uh, zooming in and zooming out mm -hmm. what difference is this mm -hmm. we're talking about creative thinking from a nova thinker someone will tell will say that uh, you know yeah i'm a creative thinker and another person will like you know you are not a creative thinker you're not a, a critical thinker you are not, you are an overthinker okay is that is it different overthinker hmm. <laughs> maybe is it, and does it even exist <laughs> overthinking <laughs> because if thinking itself huh, yeah. is uh, thrilling it's something that uh, uh, tends to escape the mind. What about now overthinking? Mm. I think it's a colloquial uh, presentation of this idea about thinking. First, what is thinking mm -hmm. and what is reasoning? It's very important uh -huh, to distinguish uh -huh. these two terms. Thinking and reasoning, because they're different. They're different, not just uh, nominally, but also substantially they are different. Not just by name, but also by their very substance they are different. Huh? So thinking is a mental process, it's a thought process huh? which encapsulates reasoning. Because when you are thinking, uh, it could be conscious or unconscious. Mm -hmm. But when you are reasoning, reasoning is now the conscious aspect of thinking you are alert, mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. not uh, absent-minded, you mm -hmm. are not daydreaming, or you are not building castles in the air. Mm -hmm. You are focused on a particular issue, and you really pursue it. Mm -hmm. That is the difference. Huh? And let me also uh, accentuate this from the onset. Huh? Creative and critical thinking does not teach people how to think, but uh, mm -hmm. its concern is how ought people think and how ought people not to think so it's 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 about improving your capacity to, to reason yes how how should you reason or how should you think and how should you not reason and how should you not think and about what and this is where yes. now people normally get um, into loggerheads with each other mm -hmm. someone will say we just don't reason together. We just can't understand each other. Mm -hmm. It's in a workplace and people just don't get along because the reasoning capacity is different. Mm -hmm. What leads to that? Is it a problem of creative and critical thinking? It's a problem of uh, exposure. It's a problem of uh, uh, your interest in life. It's a problem of the barriers to creative and critical thinking. And I'll just mention a few of these barriers thereafter mm -hmm. at, uh, at some point uh, mm -hmm. in the course of this discourse. Uh. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been struggling with these two concepts. Uh. Mm. Should we really be talking of creative and critical reasoning, mm -hmm. or should we be talking of creative and, and critical, critical thinking? thinking? Because uh, I have an issue with that word thinking. Because if you pursue it further, mm. you will uh, come to understand that the objectives of such a discipline mm. in philosophy mm. is to perfect uh, how we reason about issues, not how we think. And that's why. Uh, maybe at some point huh, mm -hmm. I'll have to write something about this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My uh, rationale or mm -hmm. my reasons huh, mm -hmm. as to why I deem it wise or judicious huh, mm -hmm. to be termed as creative and critical reasoning mm -hmm. and not creative and critical thinking. Because, because reasoning is, in your view, deeper, yes. more, let's say, um, of, of more quality in terms of uh, the outcome Absolutely. and the analysis pro pro process, yes. everything, yes. the evaluation yes. is deeper. It's very deep and uh, at the end, uh, a critical and a creative 
reasoner. Mm -hmm. Allow me to, <laughs> to refer to it as Let's special. shift it now to from thinking to <laughs> yes, reasoning. reasoning eh? uh -huh. Because eh, you have to be, you have to reason clearly, mm -hmm. right? You have to reason consistently. You have to reason accurately, mm -hmm. and you have to reason logically. And that is why reasoning is an aspect of logic. And what is logic? Logic is the sense of reasoning. Right? So you are able to see through issues, mm -hmm. big problems, mm -hmm. and pursue solutions huh? such that uh, at the end of the day, you appreciate a learning process as a transformative opportunity mm -hmm. that takes you from dependency state to autonomy state, mm -hmm. from a status of depending to a status of being liberated. That is the purpose. Now, I want us to give different scenarios. Yes. Because now someone may wonder how this affects them mm -hmm. at a personal level. Yes. Um, but, but before that, is there, um, th th there is something called um, the, the, the relationship between these two, mm -hmm. the creative and the critical. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that, that, that joins them together? The aspect that joins these two, creativity and uh, uh, reasoning, mm -hmm. or creative and critical mm -hmm. reasoning or thinking, whatever mm -hmm. one may wish to call it, mm -hmm. uh, so for as long as you can justify it, uh, mm -hmm. is that one is anchored on the other. For you to be critical, you must it be presupposes creative. Mm -hmm. that you have been creative. Eh? Creativity is actually associated with fantasy mm. or imagination. Uh, many people just assume that we have external senses. We also have internal human senses. Mm -hmm. For instance, fantasy or a sense of imagination is an internal human sense. Mm -hmm. And persons who are quite creative, eh? mm. these are persons who have got a high sense of imagination. Mm. These are persons who can uh, 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 mix different colors. These could be artists. And at the end of the day, they come up with a very piece, a uh, nice piece of work as a painted mm -hmm. art eh? uh, because they are able to blend different colors to bring harmony. Yeah. Musicians also, mm -hmm. they have got a very high sense of imagination because they are able to balance the different uh, rhythms, Mus musical notes. tones and all mm -hmm. that notes. Mm -hmm. So you have to be imaginative first before you begin being analytic, being objective, being uh, evaluative mm -hmm. or examining what you have already uh, created as a result of your creativity, mm -hmm. yes. Now, ap applying this on a day-to-day -day life, yes. how can someone be able to assess mm -hmm. and do self-evaluation mm -hmm. and say that I, I think I'm a critical, uh, and I'm a creative and critical reason or thinker? Okay, and uh, at the beginning, you said that uh, the focus ought to be in a workplace, huh? We can, we, 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 for we, instance, we, we can expound it differently. Yes, in life, for instance, if, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, many employers, in as much as the systems <laughs> have become systemic, huh? mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -huh. <laughs> or they are the so-called uh, uh, cartels, or go by the flow. You have heard of such a uh, deep state and all that, huh? mm. or deep system. The mark of somebody knowing that I've become a critical thinker mm -hmm. is when you can demonstrate the following. One, are you able to uh, know yourself? Mm -hmm. Because that is the beginning of uh, really uh, understanding what you can do as an individual. Because mm -hmm. reasoning is an individual endeavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've had some people say that you find somebody, somebody is alone, you greet the person, how are you? And the person tells you we are fine, you see? So, who is we? <laughs> Me, myself and I? 
I don't know. <laughs> it, it, for me, it has never made sense. Huh? That is just but uh, a manifestation huh? mm -hmm. of how many of us are shackled huh? by the ban of mobocracy, the mob mentality, right? Or you the keep mob on me that mentality. Ah, okay, you keep on okay. thinking and uh, assuming that you exist with the others, right? You, ca you cannot really uh, come to the realization that I am an individual. Or about can, family? I can take an initiative as an individual, right? What about family? Uh, allow me to cite a certain author, yeah. uh, John Stuart Mill. Yeah. He wrote a certain essay uh, entitled uh, uh, Essays on uh, uh, liberation uh, mm -hmm. or essays on freedom uh, or emancipation. It doesn't matter whichever word you use. Uh. And the distinction here he makes, uh, what is the difference between the I and the we? Remember mm. that the we is a product of the eyes, right? Yeah. But the eyes is not a product of, of the ways, right? Yeah, yeah. So individuals constitute or institute societies. Yeah. Societies don't institute individuals. individuals. Yeah. So it's very important at the end of the day for you to be creative, for you to be critical, know thyself, know yourself first, such that you are able to uh, bring out this uh, weaknesses and strengths, right? From yeah. yourself. Yes, first. you are able to know this is what I can do, this mm. is what I cannot do, right? Apart from that, huh, you are able to own up to responsibilities, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So owning up to responsibilities is also at, um, a, a character trait of uh, a uh, critical, critical thinking. thinking. Yes, uh -huh, because uh -huh. huh, you can stand by what you are convinced of. These are my convictions, mm -hmm. I can stand by them and I can justify them. I did this, this mm -hmm. is the reason as to why I did this, right? Mm -hmm. You don't just go by the flow. And that is the mm -hmm. bigger problem, even mm -hmm. in workplace. You cannot really say, uh, this is right, this is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Because you fear of being sucked. But if you are a creative and critical thinker, mm -hmm. you should not be fearful of such things. Because wherever you go, the world be in a position to identify these are the brands of persons that we need. Mm -hmm. Because the world is thirsting and yearning employers huh, for persons who are creative and critical. Because mm -hmm. that one adds value. Employers don't just want persons who are uh, uh, dormant. Allow me to use that word. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want persons who will add value, value addition. Mm -hmm. What are you bringing on board? Right? And you cannot know what you're bringing on board yes. if you do not know yourself and you if cannot. you've not identified your own weaknesses and yes. strengths. Yes. This is why critical thinking is, is, is important, especially at a personal level. Yes. Know, know thyself first. Know thyself first because that uh, becomes the point of departure because you are able to, uh, to really even go deep and uh, question things, huh? mm. you're able to be reflective, you're able to be analytic, huh? you are able to, to experience a life of interiority, right? You're able to take stock, and you're able to, to know where you're heading to. Uh, my brother, there is this issue of um, critical thinking, and uh, like I said, we are applying it in different areas. Yes. Um, in relationships, how does this play a role? Meeting. Mm. Uh, hurling insults here and there. It even happens in, os in, in offices. Yes. Mm. That is actually a lack and a serious dearth of creative and critical thinking. Because mm -hmm. uh, somebody who is creative and critical, mm. at the end of the day, you are able to be a beneficiary of something known as virtues of creative and critical thinking. Uh -huh. And one of these virtues mm. is intellectual humility, intellectual <laughs> maturity. You, ca you can be <laughs> humble intellectually. Yes. <laughs> For instance, uh, many people struggle with this issue. Yeah. You ask a question, it is clear that this person is naive to what you are asking, uh -huh. but the person purports to answer you. It's, you don't lose anything by saying, I don't know. 
If, if you, you don't, don't know, know, you don't know. You don't know. Yes. Instead of wasting too much energy to spill the beans of ignorance to the public, if you don't know, you don't know, right? So seeing that I don't know, if a question is posed to you, hey. it's just a manifestation of uh, intellectual humility. But, but is right? it wrong to say I don't know? That's what I'm saying. It's something very positive. But many people say that at this age and time, you should not say you don't know. You should no. try and get an answer. If you are in an interview, you uh, can't say you don't know. It's no. an interview. It doesn't matter. And that's why it's an interview. They are trying to, to, to find out which areas are you good and which areas are you not good. good. And okay. how can we better them? So mm -hmm. saying I don't know, it's actually uh, uh, a buttress huh, of what I said earlier on, that you, are, you know thyself, right? Instead of saying, you know something, and for sure you don't know, because you cannot fake uh, intelligence. <laughs> it's either you know or you don't, <laughs> you know. don't know. Yes. <laughs> so, such persons huh, are actually uh, disciples mm. of uh, lack of creative and critical thinking, because in as much as I d I don't agree with the opinion, mm -hmm. your proposal, mm -hmm. your idea. It is as better as that one of mine that mm. I've not uh, aired out or I've not shared because mm. opinions or ideas enjoy co-equality. There is no opinion or idea that is better than the other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you are able to interact at that level, it's known as the meeting of the minds, mm. you respect each other. And that's why some people who have matured intellectually will disagree ideologically, but mm -hmm. will still go along. And they will still laugh because, over because, a cup of tea. Because there are better things that you can do together than that idea that can put those better things that lie in the posterity mm -hmm. asunder, right? So it is, yeah. it is okay to disagree. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that because we have difference in ideologies, mm -hmm. then we should have uh, grudges. It doesn't mean that way. And if you ever come across such persons or you uh, air out a very splendid or noble idea mm -hmm. to your employer, but that this one could be done this way, but also you do it prudently, right? Mm -hmm. You don't uh, do it uh, in a manner that your employer will feel threatened. Eh? Mm -hmm. Any employer should be as subjective as possible right. because huh, it doesn't mean that if you're an employer, if you're my boss today, mm. you're better than me and I'm poor, right? Mm. A working environment is a place that we should learn from each other because learning is a continuous process. Right. I have never come to a place written or indicated no further learning ahead, right? Have you ever come across such no, a, no. a billboard or such a signpost? Unless you have a PhD, is there further learning ahead? I'm currently pursuing another undergraduate degree in law. Oh. I'm a third year student of law. So, <laughs> 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 so learning, learning doesn't end. Learning doesn't end. Be it uh, formal, mm -hmm. informal, or non formal. Learning is continuous. So. Many employers should create an environment, an enabling environment, whereby they can benefit from their employees. And that is why if you are to, to get some greener pastures, huh, mm -hmm. your potential employer may wish to know how was your working relationship in your former in working your former, place. Because uh -huh. huh, it's not just about uh, your conduct and all that. Huh? But these employers, the potential employers could be looking at uh, which value addition are you bringing on board? To the team. Can your former employer write something that so and so, the current company, the current organization, the current institution is a beneficiary of the blueprint of so and so? And so that it? blueprint is always as a result of this so and so's ability Creative to think and reason and reason. Yes. When there is a problem of interpretation, yes. I say something, the way you see it is different from the way another person sees it. Mm -hmm. how, how, how would you analyze such a, a, a scenario? Uh, that's a very normal uh, 
uh, encounter because mm. uh, whenever I talk of interpretation, uh, interpretation does not enjoy homogeneity. Mm. Interpretation enjoys heterogeneity. Uh, uh, okay, define that. This Hetero means and homo. Uh, homogeneity means uh, mm -hmm. here in this context. Uh, even if you are presented with the same exam, mm -hmm. a billion people, there is no point you can, uh, uh, your answers could be the same, right? Mm -hmm. Or you are, you are solving of a given problem will be the, the same, same, right? They'll be because different. our intellects operate very differently. And that is why I said earlier on, each interpretation is welcome for as long as you can justify that interpretation. Mm -hmm. The issue is validation. Can you validate what you are saying? Can you justify what you are telling us? You don't just say it and uh, uh, fail to support it. State it, justify it, or support it. Mm -hmm. There you go. And this, and, and this is where you know, things get rough. Yes. Because in a workplace mm -hmm. or at home, even mm -hmm. in a family, yes. um, two people, mm -hmm. a couple, they are arguing, mm -hmm. and the argument, if you look at it, it's a matter of interpretation yes. of that particular dilemma. Mm -hmm. But now one person fails to justify the mm -hmm. interpretation, mm -hmm. and because you cannot justify your part, you mm -hmm. get mad. Mm -hmm. That's why I said earlier on, there are certain barriers to creative and critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Never ever allow your passions or your emotions to cloud your reasoning. That will be the worst of it. Another thing is culture. Culture is a problem to creative and critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, uh, uh, is uh, how we are socialized. Socialization mm -hmm. is also a problem. Let, let's, let's talk about that, that, that issue of culture. Mm -hmm. um, how is that a problem? Um, are we talking about difference in upbringing? And the, how deep does culture go for an individual? Culture, simply defined, is a way of life, huh? mm. right? Culture is a way of life. Huh? And cultures are complex because we talk of the material and non-material. We talk of uh, the tangible and the intangible culture. So you'll find some people telling you, this is how we do things. <laughs> See, when somebody tells you, this is how we do things, huh? mm. that is a dogmatic mind. And creative and critical thinking you are not compatible with this dogmatic mind. Creative and critical thinking calls for objectivity. Mm. Be as liberal as you can. But when you begin telling me, this is how we do things, in simple terms you are telling me, I should not exercise my intellectual capacities to evaluate an issue. There is I, no, new, no new ideas should be welcome uh, on the absolutely. table. Absolutely. I should just go by the floor because you have already told me this is how we do things. If I try a new way, I'll be considered an outcast, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be ostracized. Who wants to be ostracized or to be considered uh, you are an outcast? Very mm -hmm. few can do that. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. you have seen in this country, from an instance of political sense, mm. right? Or from the political uh, uh, environment, many people become psychophantic. Mm. Critical thinking has got no place mm -hmm. in psychophantic minds. Mm -hmm. Because when you are a psychophant, you are simply telling us you have already uh, surrendered your tools of reasoning. You are there. Preconceived notions also take play here. Uh, not really, mm. because uh, ideas are communicated through actions. Mm -hmm. When you act in a particular way, we are able to interpret uh, mm. what is your thought process mm -hmm. or about your thought process, mm -hmm. right? So you cannot be psychophantic about a particular person, about mm. a particular uh, ideology, uh, ideology mm. from January to January. And uh, there must be a problem. You must have surrendered your reasoning tools, right? So, so um, all right. Let me let me give example. Now, let me start from the political side, yes. and then I come to the corporate side. Yes. In the political arena, is mm -hmm. it okay for you to like change your belief from one particular individual to another? Mm -hmm. For example, you someone will say, "I support who you." Mm -hmm. 
huyu damu mm -hmm. for example if it is lawrence lawrence damu mm -hmm. if it is ram aguko ram aguko damu mm -hmm. is it okay for someone to just say that now that i have looked at ram's idea mm -hmm. and ram's ideology mm -hmm. i feel like i subscribe mm -hmm. to lawrence's ideology so next year during the elections mm -hmm. i will not vote for lawrence as i did in 2017 mm -hmm. i'll vote for ram mm -hmm. in the 2022 elections is that also um taking place in this kind of conversation uh, politics being uh, the art of uh, the possible or the feasible. Mm. At times, I wonder whether uh, that makes sense because huh, it is not sufficient to tell me mm. that I'll support you no matter what. For life. <laughs> for life. <laughs> that's a serious swearing, eh? Yeah. Or that's a serious kind of <laughs> It doesn't make sense because eh? that is uh, somebody who is uh, first and foremost an opportunist, right? So opportunism is playing uh, at the center stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this world, not just human beings, any other living organism, will first and foremost strive to protect its interest, self-preservation, right? Before any other. Absolutely. And that's why in politics, don't be cheated by these politicians that I'll do this for you, mm. I'll do this for you. That one is outright nonsense because huh, they are purposely there for their self-interest. And if you look at this idea of the common good or mutual good, huh, uh, taking an example of certain scholars like Adam Smith, uh, Adam Smith uh, in his book, some aspects uh, of his book, The Wealth of the Nations, uh, mm. and there is another book he wrote on, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, ethical sentimentalism uh, or moral sentimentalism? Uh, he presents a very nice argument mm. that uh, taking an example of a butcher person and a baker, what drives their interest? Is it you as a potential customer or it is them making profit? Now, my brother, there's something you, you, you mentioned mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. that's saying that uh, every particular, for example, a politician will say that mm -hmm. uh, I will do this for you mm -hmm. if you vote for me. Yes. And you're saying that is not something that you really subscribe to. Mm -hmm. um, isn't that also going going against intellectual freedom? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that also change the whole narrative of saying mm -hmm. that we need to be critical thinking mm -hmm. where you can be able to mm -hmm. accept all mm -hmm. things on mm -hmm. the table mm -hmm. and reevaluate? Mm -hmm. Because this politician will say mm -hmm. and not do, but mm -hmm. that will say and do. Mm -hmm. Intellectual freedom. No, yes, intellectual freedom. Mm -hmm. But in this context, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it may not be uh, applicable. Why? Mm. Going by history, because history, there is also another philosopher, Hegel, who talks about history, eh? mm. that the driving force into history is the human reason or the logos. Eh? And uh, the product of history is human emancipation. So if you want to be emancipated as a human being, as an individual, mm. always be in touch, be in tandem with your history. So the reason as to why I'm saying that does not add up, huh? mm. it's going by the modus operandi of uh, how, how these been politicians have uh -huh. been uh, uh, behaving, right? Mm. They are there, that is a job, right? Mm -hmm. You have employed them, you'll pay them through the tax. Huh? They are there first and foremost to protect their interest. Because the example I was citing of uh, Adam Smith, huh? mm. as to whether a baker and a butcher person, mm. their interest is you as a, as, a, as, a, as a potential customer, or it's about protecting their self-preservation. The answer is in the latter. They are there to protect their self-interest, self right? And the common good or mutual good is actually a product of an overflow or an overspilling of you having satisfied your personal interest. Can right. that ever exist? 
now let's mm -hmm. let's take a, a look at the corporate side now mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. issue of culture believing mm -hmm. and as, as, ascribing to a certain ideology you mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. In, a, in an office where mm -hmm. people say that, uh, okay, so you've been newly employed mm -hmm. in a certain corporate sector, mm -hmm. and then they tell you, so here, this is how you work. Mm -hmm. When you come up with a new idea, they'll tell you, no, it won't work here. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, mm -hmm. go home with it. Mm -hmm. This is how we operate here, mm -hmm. and there is no, apart from this, there is no other law. Mm -hmm. What do you do in such kind of an office, in, that, in such kind of a corporate world where you want, you need that job. Mm -hmm. Two, you would like to also employ your own uh, aspects of critical thinking, mm -hmm. yet at the same time, there is so much bureaucracy, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. and that culture is there that ought not to be changed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very right or, and uh, apt question. Mm. It's happening all over. My attempted response to such persons who are experiencing that huh, is the reason as to why change comes into place is identifying a need. Right. And once you have identified this need, eh, the best way of replacing something eh, or well, the best way of doing away with something, the old ways, huh, mm -hmm. is coming up with new things, new ideas. Huh? Mm. So persistence should guide this process. Be as prudent as possible. Because if you do it in a manner that uh, is so imprudent, huh, mm. you'll be shooting yourself in the foot. Huh? But, if so, you, if, but if, if you keep on persisting, you yes. may even lose your job. You, you keep cannot. on going to, to that office with that idea every month. They, they will tell you, but you're fired. You cannot. You cannot. You, huh? you cannot. Huh? Because huh? Uh, for as long as the idea does not in any way mm. vitiate your job jurisdiction, it does not in any way vitiate or negatively affect the philosophy, mission, and vision of that organization. That, uh -huh. You are protected because I saw a new uh, amendment uh, on mm -hmm. this uh, uh, employment and labor laws uh, that currently even if you are being sacked summarily, mm. it should be documented, uh, right? right? Mm -hmm. So this is a growth for the employees in the sense that they are protected within the law for as long as you are doing the right thing. Keep on pushing, keep on pursuing whatever mm -hmm. you, are, uh, you, you are focusing on. For as long as you do it prudently, mm -hmm. for as long as you have realized that there is a need, mm -hmm. and for as long as you have realized huh, the old ways mm -hmm. can be replaced by this new way to give us a new sigh of relief. Now. Let me apply the same same thing now. Yes. In uh, a personal level, mm -hmm. we believe we move from the polit political to the corporate now to the personal. Yes. In the relationship, where someone says, "My husband or my wife mm -hmm. or my fiance or mm -hmm. whoever, mm -hmm. there is a way they think. Mm -hmm. This is how they do it. Mm -hmm. In a way that you can't bring any new idea. You, it, you know, he will not accept it at all." Mm -hmm. How do you handle such, a, such an issue creatively and critically? One, knowledge is power, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you are faced with such a situation, huh, try to bait the person. Try to come up with uh, maybe some reading materials. <laughs> try, try, try to share. Yeah, give them a book. <laughs> yes, try to share some uh, information about uh, uh. what uh, your intentions are. But let your intention not be the guiding principle. Mm. Because one element of creative and critical thinking uh, mm -hmm. is seeking for information, pursuing information, right? Mm -hmm. And you cannot pursue information if you are not in tandem with research. 
right? You have to keep on reading. So induce this person into maybe some reading culture, right? Mm -hmm. Induce this person into different scenarios, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Indirectly. At the end of the day, you will have lured this person into what you want. Because, because you, you will have opened up their yes, mind towards that. Yes, because this person is a victim of fundamentalism or uh, being dogmatic, huh? that this is how I do my things. Mm. I cannot entertain any foreign or new ideas. Mm. It doesn't work that way. Does it, does it also apply to um, introverts? I should say with... Uh, <laughs> with uh, guarded uh, uh, words here that uh, my take uh. introverts could be very deep thinkers uh -huh. yeah introverts could be very deep thinkers because uh, there is a latin phrase uh, mm. that Sita quises man ceases philosophicals. Eh? That if at all you'll remain silent for a moment, eh? mm. you'll become a philosopher. Philosophers are deep thinkers, right? Philosophers are deep reasoners, if I may also use that phrase. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you cannot reason, you cannot think in a mob. And that's mm -hmm. like contemplation, mm -hmm. reflection mm -hmm. actually. I talked of reflection it, earlier. It right? mostly happens in isolation. Yes, take your time, take your time off. Huh? Just be with yourself and uh, take stock of what you have been doing, where uh, you are and where you wish to be. I want us to wrap this conversation up. Yes. And I want to give you just a minute yes. to have a final word in regards to this critical and uh, creative and critical thinking or creative and critical reasoning. Mm -hmm. What would be what should be our take home to the youth, young, old um, person who is watching yes. you right now? Yes. What should what would you like to you know leave them with? That is your camera. Maybe you can talk to them. Uh, uh, allow me to say the following: that one, invest in philosophy because uh, the world is thirsting for. Uh, philosophical minds, persons who have pursued philosophy, such that the future could be better. Huh? And two, it's not that the world could be in dire need huh, of uh, uh, persons who reason and think critically. Mm -hmm. It's not a lack. Huh? The problem is how can they be actuated? How can they be motivated? Eh? In the sense that uh, there is a lot of dormancy. So how do we move from this stage of dormancy to a stage of, of being active, eh? from mm -hmm. being passive to being active? Eh? Mm -hmm. And lastly, philosophy pursues the whole. Eh? And uh, many of us could be suffering from these aspects of taking things superficially, uh, taking things uh, uh, from a way perspective, the mob uh, mentality. So it's a higher time that we begin living and existing as individuals because reasoning is an individual activity. It's not a we activity. So the I is important. The we is also important. But in this context, first and foremost, know thyself. Then the rest shall just fall in the rightful places. Thank well, you. Uh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Lawrence. What you've said that is quite uh, deep is reasoning is an individual activity. Yes. It's not a group activity. It's not. If you find it difficult when, it, when you're in a meeting in the office, when you're at home, know that reasoning is an individual activity. Yes. As long as you do your part and you reason fast yes. and do the analysis, it will, be, it, it will really work best. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I want to thank everyone who is watching, uh, Nancy, Alice, Abuya, Nyongo, uh, Bernice, Ndoati, Kalale, Wayuna, Jefferson, Yamamba, uh, Deno Spark. Thank you so much, everyone. Kijana Wakibaki. Kijana Yakibaki. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and uh, being part of this conversation. I was with Dr. Lawrence Ofunja, who is a lecturer at Kuwaya. Thank you so much, Dr. for uh, joining me today. Thank you. 
it, it Thank was, you very it, much. It was interesting, yeah? Thank you very much. My take on reasoning is an individual. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they should also <laughs> fight barriers yeah. to creative and critical thinking because there are so many, right from our families, yeah. even to our future life, even as we are adults, we keep on facing these challenges. Yeah. So yeah. let us not go mm -hmm. by the floor. Mm -hmm. Let us not just uh, uh, be passive. Let us be as active as possible. Let us keep on pursuing research eh? yes. through philosophy. Thank you so much. Reasoning yeah. is an individual activity. Pursue research. <laughs> Learn more. Read books. Yeah. And if convincing them is a problem, give them a book somewhere. <laughs> Let them read it. <laughs> it has been a pleasure with being with you together uh, since the beginning of this show. This has been one in the morning. Thank you so much for being part of this show. Thank you for keeping me company from, uh, company from the beginning now till the tail end. My name is Ram Maguko. I wish you well. Thank you so much. See you again next time for another edition of Why in the Morning. God bless you and may God bless the work of your hands.